for close to four decades, Mark Chiyowojaye has been in the forefront of evangelism and revival in Nigeria. Known as a pastor to pastors, his ministry has raised many ministers who in turn today are imparting thousands. Born in 1947, Matthew Wojaye is the founder of Food for the Total Man Ministries in Kaduna in Northern Nigeria, an evangelistic and revival group that he launched in 1981 with a passion to win the lost at all costs and awake the church to action. He turned 73 this year, yet the zeal and passion of this elderly statesman and fairy preacher of the gospel has continued to burn. Matthew Wojaye is my guest tonight as we discuss his life and his heart for the church. This is Chimstock Africa. But before we do that, please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Chimstock Africa. Hi there, welcome to this episode of your show. I'm your host, Chim Onyebilama. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, today, I'm so eager to share with you my conversation with Matthew Wojaye, one of the veteran uh, evangelists and leader among the Pentecostal movement in Nigeria. But before we do so, I just want to quickly share with you a burden uh, that came to my heart recently as I was reading the papers. I was reading about the, the people who live around the Lake Chad area. The Lake Chad is the lake that you find and the borders between Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, as well as Niger. And these people have been displaced because of the terrorist acts of Boko Haram in the area. And these are thousands, tens of thousands of people scattered away from their livelihood, from their village, and they find themselves in very unlivable, uh, internally displaced uh, uh, camps where you where you where you where where these uh, refugees who are internally displaced are gathered lacking some of the basic needs and very desperate and i was just thinking one of the fact that these people come from very muslim groups people who are basically unrich unevangelized ethnic groups and this is such an opportunity for us as a church if we can grab and seize this opportunity to send up missionaries into these uh, refugee camps that are coming up all over. And uh, as we meet their basic need, we can really bring them to the Lord, especially at this desperate time of their need. These people have been in my prayer for weeks now, and I want to share this as a prayer point to you, for you to consider praying for them. But beyond that, if you're a church leader, if you're an individual, consider getting involved, either by sending a missionary among them or beginning to support whoever might be interested in reaching them. You can use the contact on the screen to contact us for more information about how you can get involved today, whether it is true prayer or true actually going. Let's join hands together to take the gospel to these people who are desperate at this time, but who have no no, who have not had the gospel among them. And let's use this opportunity to bring the light to them. Amen. Now, let's go to my conversation with Brother Matthew Wojaye. I'm sure this is going to inspire you. Welcome, dear viewers, to this segment of your show. Like I said in the intro, my guest today is... Uh, Brother Matthew Owojaye, who is an evangelist and the leader of the Food for the Total Man Ministries. Sir, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Now, as I explained in the intro, you have lived a life that has spanned a lot of the move of God in Nigeria. And I, I want us to go through your life and your ministry and some of the things you've learned along the way. Now, what I want to go to is that one thing that revolutionized your life was in 1972 yes. when you were in university and you were filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. So tell us what it was like, what really happened in that, in that period. Well, one of the key issues was that there was the InterVarsity Christian Union, there was the Scripture Union, which was solid on Christian character. If you say you are born again, show it. There was thorough Bible study. There was passion for souls. People were going for evangelism. Every hall, every room in the university was visited with evangelism. 
But when the move of the Holy Spirit came in, then the fire to carry on. People were set ablaze for God. Nothing was more important than following God. Nobody was pursuing money. Nobody was looking for title. You just want to live and die for Jesus. People will do three days fast, ten days fast, and still be going for lectures. And these were people in their teens. Uh, yes, in their teens, yes, yes. And they were on fire for God. So we got filled with the Holy Spirit. T.L. Osborne sent his, uh, he gave you a generator, gave you film and projector. So we were going to different places, preaching with it, and seeing results. Then I was, you know, casting out of demons. We don't need to know all the names of the demons. Because when the presence of God comes, the demons are manifesting, and you ask them to leave. So there was real praying. When you are going for lecture, you first go early. Go to the church and pray and pray and pray. And you are not praying for car or houses or wife or husband. You are just praying to be used of God. That was the kind of spirit. When you are coming back from lecture, you go to chapel again. So that if you are to stand near the chapel, you see people going in and out. Throughout the whole day, just praying. Fasting and praying. And then the revival busted forth. And then we were going to all the secondary schools around we will say we want to teach them biology and chemistry, but we'll carry Jesus along. And the fire caught. So they carry the fire all over Nigeria. Of course, you know, when you carry passion and you carry fire, you will go to excess. But excess fire is better than no fire. <laughs> you can correct the error. But when there's no fire, what can you do? So some of us will even miss lectures and go and pray for people in the hospital. Mm. We we'll go to different places. In fact, me, instead of spending three years, I spent six years on campus. in the university. So this was the kind of fire, evangelism, love for Jesus, passion for souls, and living right. Now, so, I want to go to something, uh, 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 Jaye. You were working the bank up till 1980. I, I went to the bank 1978. Up to 1981. Now, you left, you resigned from the bank to start off in full-time ministry yes. under what has become now total food for, food the, for total. the total man. Yes. Now, and this was in Kaduna. Tell, tell us a bit of what it looked like, because many people who knew you then said people were shocked that you would leave such a lucrative position uh, to go into something that looked like nothing, because you were not going to become a pastor even. You were going to start off an evangelistic ministry. What did God tell you? Well, what I tell you happened in 1972, I was in the university. Then on holiday in Lagos here, Nigeria. Then the Holy Ghost spoke to me. John went into all the area preaching the gospel. So I knew I had a call to preach like John the Baptist. To prepare the people for the coming of Jesus. And to beat people back to the narrow road. So he set the fire. Then somebody came to me uh, on, the, on the fellowship. Oh, what you come out? God is calling you out as an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Another person told me, Yemi, are you are going to work for three years. After that, you are moving out. Mm -hmm. So when I took the job in the bank, 78, 81, I knew the three years were over. Okay. And the, the call to preach was so much that you can work in the bank. You can only take weekend preachings. Mm -hmm. And the preachings were spanning throughout the whole week. And a new time was up. The two couldn't come together. No, and I had a wife who understood my calling mm. from the beginning before we married, who was 100% with me, so who agreed for me to move out, and we can depend on her salary. Mm. What, what was she doing? She was a lecturer okay. in the Card Cardona Polytechnic. Okay, and so you moved out, and uh, over the years, through the northern part of Nigeria, and indeed across Nigeria. Yes. You've been known as a man who has stood for evangelism and stood for holiness in the church. When you look back, what has been the highlights? When you look back and say, these are some of the things I rejoice to see God has done. You know, God has been good. Like, there was a revival that sparked up in the Anglican church in Kaduna. And the Lord was moving, using us and some other people. Up to a point that the bishop had to say, Oh, that you should not preach in any Anglican church again. Why? Because they felt I was causing trouble. But I loved him and respected him. Until Bonke came to Kaduna and we put him as a chairman when he saw the crowd 
and saw souls coming to the kingdom because he loved so many. Mm. He just opened up all the diocese of the north. And now in, in the northern states, most of the Anglican bishops are Pentecostals. On fire for God, not just speaking in tongues, but on fire for God and going for evangelism. So that was a revival that sparked through the Anglican church. We'll go for a break, but when we come back, I want to talk about the challenges you faced. I know your wife just died last year, but there are other challenges that happened in the past. We'll go for a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about that. Uh, dear viewers, we've been talking to uh, Evangelist Matthew Wojaye, who is the leader of Food for the Total Man Ministries. He's an evangelist and well known as the, a leader of leaders. We'll go for a break now. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Please don't go away. in South Africa as well as from various parts of Africa. Join me each week as I interview leaders from across the continent and we seek to unpack the issues facing Africa from God's perspective. We cannot solve the problems of South Africa with fighting. The church needs to rediscover its own prophetic voice. There are some conversations you can't afford to miss. This is Jim Stock Africa. Welcome back, the viewers, to this second part of my interview with uh, Uncle Machio Wojaye. He's the founder and leader of Food for the Total Man Ministries in Kaduna, in the north of Nigeria. And we'll be talking about his life. There's so much to glean from it. And by the way, we'll be having other episodes with him talking about issues. But I just want us to focus on you. I know you don't like to talk too much about yourself. But you, you, you settled and became a northerner, so to say. A southerner that is a northerner. Uh, you are almost, you have almost become a northerner in the full sense of it. Tell us about what led to your, your choosing the north as your place. Well, as you said, a soldier does not post himself. I was posted to Kaduna for my youth call, the national service, mm. and God said, stay there. I took the job in the bank. After three years, I move out. And then, this is where I want you to stay. Mm. Things can be tough and rough, but a soldier does not post himself. So true. You don't have a right to move away from somewhere because things are tough. And the Christian life, God did not say it's going to be a smooth road. Mm. In fact, Joseph did not have a smooth. He knew he, would become, he might become a big man, mm. but God didn't tell him the route. Moses, God didn't tell him you spent 14 years in the wilderness. Mm. So each one of us, like now I went to the university, after three years I had to start part one all over. So it took me six years to get a BSc. Because I was causing trouble even in the class. I would challenge lecturers. One lecturer put a, a photo of a telescope in his door. I'm looking for God. If you have found it, let me know. I went there, I said, I found God. Say, where is he? I say, in my heart. He said, no, sin is believing. I told him, have you ever seen energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, electrical energy? Have you ever seen energy? He said, no. I said, God is like energy. And I walk out. So that kind of life, I had to spend six years instead of three yes. years. So now, moving on, I left the bank. I was well paid, official car. But God told me, do not start a church. I didn't send you. And people told me, you, are, you cannot survive. It is the tithe and the offering that you have to depend on. And I said, I didn't see that in the Bible. Even fellow ministers. And God proved himself faithful. And total, uh, food, food. the total man has been a ministry that has never started a church, yes. but has served all churches. And this has been now over 30 years. Yes. But tell me, what have been the challenges? Well, first of all, there is financial challenge. Thank God the money was, we made sure that the tithe of the school was coming to do God's work. Mm. Because it was set up mm. by God for God's work. Mm. Number two, we believe that everybody serving God were in the same company. Mm. Therefore, if I have money, there's no reason 
Why another group? Christian that is really doing God's work should be suffering for lack of money and you keep the money. And you must live also a simple lifestyle. There was a time one of my daughters messed up and I said to the church, you must do open rebuke. They said, no, I said you will do it. It will help the child because the child was not wayward, but there was a problem. And she has two farms since then mm. and is having a ministry to help others in that stage. Mm. Then, last year, March 11, my wife died. And this was an angel in Dali. Mm. Because God had cooked us together on the campus. How long have you married? 40 years, 7 wow. months. Wow. And her senior brother was the head of service for the whole of Nigeria. Mm. Alice in Aida. Mm. So she could have come from a big home. Mm. But she came down to live at my level. Mm. Even though she had money, she could pay salary of millions of naira every month, but live simple. Mm. Because that was the life we felt God has called every believer to live. Mm. So when she died, but I just thank God. Mm. The whole of the church mm. in the north mm. came and stood mm. with me. Mm. Brother, he gave comfort. Mm. Some brethren who are even Major then and now I retired from the army, mm-hmm. came and slept on, on the same bed with mm-hmm. me to keep me comfortable. Mm-hmm. When you are in a problem like that and the church stands, brother, mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. face it easily. Mm-hmm. You know, Brokon was telling me yesterday that you had to relocate the funeral to a, an open field yes. because of the thousands of people that, that, came, that, to came, that came to celebrate her the life. The place turned to a revival. Mm-hmm. Because we were not worrying about it. It's only when it was time to go and bury. We remember that it was burial we came for. Mm. Some people have been, you know, some people have been concerned that you remarried so soon after the passing of your dear late wife last in 2018, that you remarried soon after, a year plus after in 2019. Uh, tell us how, how God led you into that and how, I, you, how you will respond to that concern. Yes. She was an angel. She came into the ministry because we came from the revival in the university together. Mm. And she pawned the whole of her life. Her brother was the head of service for the whole of Nigeria. So she came from a big home, but just settled down, praying, backing up in prayer, welcoming you home. Mm. When such a person is gone, Mm. nobody backing you up in prayer, Mm. and you are doing a dangerous work, because you are attacking everything that is wrong. Then, when God spoke to me that I was going to marry, I asked the Lord, would they say it's too early? The Lord said, who is going to tell God when to speak? Who is going to tell God when to speak? Then the Lord told me, it must not be anybody close to your wife. It must not be anybody close to you. And funny enough, there was a lady I approached 50 years ago when I had not even met my wife at all because we married 77 and I met this lady 69 we had not even met my wife then she told me she was too young I should go away and now this year she's 62 she had never married we were not in contact I had to get her phone number from somebody. In that 40 years, I don't think if we calculate the time we met together, it couldn't be up to two hours. Mm. And then the Lord said, that's the person. She had a PhD 25 years ago. And yet, no husband, no wife, no child. And the Lord said, that's where you are going. Not that I was in love because I was not in contact with the person. But I know that when I hear from God, that's final. How you feel doesn't come in. You just move on. Then the children accepted, and then she has interest in evangelism and prayer. So it becomes a backup. You see, in Nigeria, if you're a minister, you are not married, or your wife is not with you. Anybody can come to your house and say anything happen. Some people want to come. They cannot come. They say, people, if you're leaving your house by 10 p.m., ah, He's coming out from that house by 10 p.m. But if the person's wife is there, if they're leaving by 12 o'clock, everybody knows that you are safe. Mm. And Nigeria, not anybody can go and swear anywhere mm. that you did anything. Mm. Where you are doing it, is there any witness? Mm. You'll not be able to escape yourself. Mm. So when God gives an instruction at land, mm. you just move on. 
That's so good. Listen, I want to go back to the revival in the 70s, and we're going to land with it, because I want us to look at what, what did we have then? If you compare the revival in the 70s, what we call today the SU revival, late 60s, early 70s in Nigeria, there was this move of God. You rightly des- described in the first part, yes. which you described as what you keyed into in the university. And then when you compare it to what we call the move of God today, w- what are the elements we have then that you would say, uh, this were the distinguishing mark of that revival, and how do you compare it to what is going on today? Godly repentance, godly sorrow leads to repentance. The messages we are giving today do not convict. They entertain people. The church is not an entertainment center. The church should be a military camp that raises radicals for God. But today we want them to feel good. We pastor preachers have become jesters on the pulpit. It's not a theater. So then there was preaching of what it means to repent. If you go to church but you don't meet Jesus for so salvation, you are still a non believer. Jesus is the door. And every, all human beings are goats, stubborn, rebellious. But when they meet Jesus, a miracle takes place. Transformation takes place. And the goat is turned into a sheep. Mm. But some sheep, some goats, did not pass through Jesus the door. They jumped the fence As into the sheep goat and remain goats. Okay. So today we have a lot of people in church who have never met Jesus. They are active church members, yes. but they remain goats. They remain goats. Because until you meet Jesus for salvation, and, uh, and Jesus, we treat him, you know, as if he's to do our bidding. Mm. Jesus, yes, ma'am, my husband is going to Lagos. Take him there, say, let bring him back. Yes, ma'am. No, he gives the order, not we. So there is a difference. And if a man is not converted, he's not converted. If I hear you very well, the key difference is the kind of message exactly. that is coming out of our pulpit. Yes. Whereas then the emphasis was to get godly sorrow yes. that would lead to repentance. Yes. Today, a change of character. A change of character. Changing goats into sheep. Yes. Whereas today our emphasis is on making... And God will give you a car, He will give you visa, He will give you money. Those things don't convict. They only entice. So in your understanding, the key thing we need to change is our message. Yes. And that's where we've gone wrong. We must go back to preach what they preach in the Bible. Repent or perish. You know what we're going to do? We're going to learn this here. And I'm going to ask you for your last word. And then we'll have you back later. Because I want to talk to you about some things you've written uh, about the state of the church. But that will be another episode. What will be your last word? As you look back at your life, what do you want to be remembered for? You are 72 Two. now. Uh, what would you want to be remembered for when Matthew Ojaye is gone? That I love Jesus and I'm in a company of mad people. Those who are mad for <laughs> Jesus. So that's all. That I love Jesus and I will not apologize for it and I don't fear anybody. If I die now, nobody will say, he died too early. So that's it. That when we stand before him, he can say, well done, good and faithful servant. What's your last word to those watching you? Young people who are the age when you got on fire for the Holy Spirit. Older people who are leading churches today across Africa. What will be your challenge as we cap this up? I'm going to tell you this. The love of pleasure, the love of money, that's not the primary concern of Christianity. Christianity is not about making you happy. It's about putting God's power in you. That when you face situation, you overrun it and have victory. You can young look people, your camera here. Sir. Young people, money cannot give peace of mind. You can have all the education. Your life, your marriage can be broken. Your life can be shattered. But get hold of Jesus. When you get hold of Jesus, you can close your eyes. He will lead you right. You may pass through rough road. But you will end up in heaven, in glory. That I can testify that God is faithful. So don't pursue things that have no eternal value. Will, does your life have eternal value? The things you focus on, the things you pursue, is it to show yourself who you are? Or to show Jesus inside of you? 
when you finish preaching, do people say, that's a wonderful preacher, or what a wonderful Jesus? If you are putting the people's attention on yourself, you have failed miserably. Young people, don't copy us old people that are doing the wrong thing. Go back to the Bible. Go to the original. What was the life of the apostles? What type of life did they live? That's the original. The Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven, abandoned all the glory, all the pleasure there to suffer here, and we are to follow in his footsteps. That's the real, authentic Christianity. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank, Thank you, you sir. so much for coming on the show. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank We're you, going to land this year and. Uh, Thank you for joining us uh, this far. I'll come back later and round up. Please don't go away. Thank you, sir. Hi there. Welcome back. I'm sure that was quite inspiring and challenging to you. If this program has been a blessing to you today, I want to, you to consider partnering with us. Your gift of any form will help us to continue to take the gospel to various parts of Africa through this show that seeks to challenge Christians to be salt and light. And as a thank you to you, I would like to send you a copy of my latest book, God Gives His Children a Song. This is a, a book containing a message that has blessed people all around the world, and I want to send it to you to say thank you for any gift you give to this ministry at this time. Now use the information on the screen to find out how you can begin to partner with us today. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll see you same station, same time next week. Bye-bye. Please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else.